Ugh, my hay fever. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, um, I've got a little sit down and um, sort of chat with you video um, all about my first year of university. Um, I haven't done really a sit down video in a long time, I don't think. No, I don't think I have. Um, and I put a little questionnaire thing on my Instagram stories just asking, fresh as 2020, do you have any questions about the first year of uni and what to expect from the first year? And just basically any tips and advice on moving away from home and becoming independent and yeah, university life. Even though I'm probably not the best person to come to for advice, um, hopefully I've got some wisdom for my first year and also it's not that great because my first year was cut short <laughs> um, but I'll do my best to try and answer these questions. I've actually got quite a few responses and quite a few of the same questions so I'll make sure I try and answer them in as much detail as possible because to be honest I really wish there were more videos like this when I um, started uni because I really did look on YouTube. I think it's a great way to sort of navigate your way around what you need to bring um, like little things to expect, tips on making friends and things like that. I wish there was more of that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this video will help you freshers out. I go to Bath Spa University and I'm studying drama and I'm loving it. I'm loving life. It was really good. My first year was honestly like it couldn't have gone better. Um, I've just completed my like all my assignments. So I'm completely free and nothing to do. So I thought I'd come on here and try and help you all out as much as I can. <laughs> Got a new laptop. So I did have a Microsoft Surface Go, I think it's called, one of the old ones, and it just was getting too old for me. And I've got this massive, look how big it is. It's called the um, Acer Aspire 3, and it's like 256 gig, 256 gig, all that. And I really splashed out, treated myself. So yeah, I've actually got the responses on here, and I'm actually really excited about that. And I feel really professional, like, so yeah right let's jump in first question is is it easy to make friends or do you have to really put yourself out there and try hard first of all i'd say definitely try and mingle with people so even if you're quite shy as a person it's definitely very important during freshers like on nights out um and when you're doing your like introduction week to try and talk to as many people as possible because if you think about it everyone who is there is in the exact same position as you probably thinking the exact same like oh i don't want to talk to them they look intimidating but no one's really that intimidating because you're all in the same place even if they're a couple of years older than you or younger than you you're in the same place, you're all in the first year of uni. Try and get in group chats before you move in and you'll be able to mingle fine. If you have like introduction weeks like we had, I found that really helpful. Um, obviously, because I'm doing a course which is very collaborative because I'm doing drama, it was quite easy for me to make some friends because you have no choice but to like embarrass yourself on the first day in front of everyone. So just try and talk to as many people as possible. Even if like, like me being a girl, when you're in the toilets, you always, talk about absolute random stuff with a, some random girl in the toilet and you tell them like your whole life story just things like that like you'll see them on every night out after that probably and like pretend you're friends or you might become best friends with them you never know so yeah i definitely say try don't not try um personally i was very lucky because the people who i lived with we all really got on and we spent the whole of freshers together and we didn't really need to branch out as much um but yeah i kind of wish i did a little bit uh but I think because I was so comfortable with my housemates, then I didn't think I needed to. Right, next question is, how do you balance your time between studying and social life? Most courses don't have more than maybe, well, in my university anyway, like most people I know, don't have maybe more than maybe like four hours a day in uni, if that. Like my longest day was four hours and the earliest start is nine, nine a.m., and even if you're out the night before and you've got a three hour lecture the next day, just go in, sit at the back, have a cup of coffee, literally have your hood up. They don't care. They're not going to point you out because there's about 50 of you, even more than that in the lecture room. And as soon as you get back, you can go straight to bed. Um, there's a police car going past. Okay. don't know if that was a good answer, but I hope it was. I hope that made sense. I sort of rambled. Okay. Next question is, is it hard to manage your money? Um, no, 
not at all um as long as you're not a spendthrift and you don't spend 50 pound a week on boohoo.com and misguided every week then you'll be fine um i think the freedom of living on your own you don't have your mum on your back to shout at you for ordering um oh i just messed up the background you didn't see anything <laughs> the thing of not having your mum on your back when a massive misguided parcel comes through your door every day is like one massive freedom i found was really exciting and i sort of took advantage of that for the first like couple months <laughs> but just don't do it food you don't spend i'd say i spent maybe 40 pound max a week on food and if you're getting the maximum loan you're gonna be fine with that um and also you'll have a bit left over as well for social life and things and again like i said if you've only got two student nights a week you don't have to go out every night you don't even have to go out like every week but if you do you can just go to the student night which is cheap anyway however i would recommend having a part-time job um i was lucky enough to get a student transfer with the tesco i work with at home um and i work in a smaller tesco in bath um two nights a week like two five hour shifts and that didn't take a toll on me at all because it's such an easy job and it is easy money it was nice to have that other group of friends other than uni and i think that is a major thing of a part-time job as well so yeah that was definitely a massive help um but even if you're not getting the maximum loan you know you'll be getting allowance from your parents i presume and you really don't need that much uh it sounds scary because obviously you're paying for yourself for everything but it's not that much you're just one person it's just a meal a night for you and then like i don't know 30 pounds on a night out unless you get really drunk and then spend 100 quid i would recommend if you're really worried about it try looking for a part-time job there's so many supermarkets that would probably take you on um restaurants pubs bars things like that definitely and i know a couple of girls um who go to my uni they actually work on the student night like not every week but they do sometimes and help out and that's just a bit of extra cash in hand as well just look around if you need a bit of extra cash there's definitely things around is uni a massive step up from sixth form is it bigger than the step from gcse to a level um this is difficult because obviously it is a massive step up in terms of independence because the uni don't push you as much as my sixth form teachers did and you really have to learn you have to learn to motivate yourself which took me a long time to get into because if you didn't turn up to sixth form there'd be teachers on your back and your attendance and everything and even though there is a bit of that in uni like you're paying to be there so they don't really care that much like they're not going to push you if you don't want to be there you're the one wasting your money so i found that bit quite hard learning to actually motivate myself but on the other hand it's not that much big of a jump academically because if you think about it if you did a levels um which i did you're doing three or four um different subjects probably most of them you don't even want to do you just have to choose some um so many exams and exams were the worst thing like i hated exams and i'm not good at them at all hence why i'm doing drama which is mainly coursework and performance um and yeah you're motivating yourself to go to something you actually want to do i think that's the massive massive difference um and even if you're doing a massive degree like maths or english lit or any science or something really academic you're paying to be there so you obviously really want to do it so it's easier to motivate yourself whereas in sick form i did enjoy all my subjects but having like three different lessons of something a day i honestly couldn't go back and do that now i really couldn't honestly just don't stress just Go with the flow and you'll, you'll work it out it will be hard at the start but you'll work it out that's what i found stupid question it's definitely not a stupid question but what do most people wear to lectures um literally anything there's no dress code uh apart from we were told at the start because i do drama we were told to wear like blacks just because of movement and things in drama with our bodies um but for other things i don't think there's anything like you don't have to dress a certain way you can literally turn up in joggers and a hoodie and they won't question it at all yeah you do you you wear what you want like go crazy i suppose as long as you're not turning up naked they really won't care but if you're actually really worried about it jeans and a hoodie jeans and a t-shirt or whatever your style is just something basic it doesn't really matter no one's gonna judge you people will probably think you're cool for wearing something funky to a lecture do you know what i mean 
especially if you go into something like that's really deep heavy um lesson and you turn up wearing some funky bright colored like dress <laughs> it'll brighten the mood anyway so honestly wear what you want literally wear what you want do most people join societies um in my uni i don't know that many people who are apart from obviously because i'm doing a creative course i know loads of people on the theater society and musical theater society um i actually paid to be in the musical theater society but i didn't turn up to like the first few showcases and then scared myself that they judged me for turning up like really late in the year so i wasted 25 quid but i'm gonna try again next year okay and yeah we'll see so don't do that if you pay go to the first one and then you'll be fine i think joining societies if you're worried about making friends a massive massive help um because again like in your lectures obviously that's going to be harder to make friends because you have to sit there in silence but in a society you're with people that have the same things in common as you and you can talk about that and you'll base you'll probably be so similar to them and you'll easily make friends there um but in in terms of how many people join them um sports so if you do sports outside of like if you do it semi-professionally or you did it in school or you're in the sports team at home that's the main thing that i've noticed people do like a couple of girls i know joined the netball society um because they did it at home uh football society rugby society things like that um and i definitely do that if you're especially worried about making friends because of the socials and they just put on loads of different activities and it'll be really fun and just a great thing to do next question is clubbing is clubbing an essential part of uni hmm this is a hard question because personally i think it's one of the biggest parts of my whole first year experience but that's just because i love going out and clubbing i wouldn't say it's essential though like if you're not into clubbing and you don't do it normally why should you force yourself to go when you go to uni i think if all of your housemates are maybe try and you know just go on one night out you never know you might love it you might hate it but you may as well try just to try and mingle with everyone in your house um but honestly i know a lot of people on my course who don't go clubbing they go to like the socials with drama and stuff but they don't go out every week not even every month and i don't see a problem with that you're not going to be judged at all like you're there for a degree at the end of the day not for the club inside it's just personally and the people i'm friends with love clubbing and if you don't who cares like really who cares don't think you're going to be judged when you move in and say oh i actually haven't been clubbing before if you haven't they're not going to judge you they're probably going to like love that because your first experience of clubbing will be with them and even if you don't want to go they honestly won't care it's not essential no but personally it was a big part of my first year experience and probably my whole uni experience advice for freshers how to cope and is it is it as good as expected um i don't know if this means like freshers week or advice for freshers i'm not gonna say advice for freshers because that's what this whole video is about i'm guessing she means freshers week advice for it honestly i know this sounds really bad and i'm not one to promote like alcoholism but being really drunk <laughs> oh god being really drunk helps it does because you break the ice with people you get to have a laugh and you probably if you do something embarrassing you're not going to remember it in the morning so just you know if you're a drinker just drink a bit even you don't have to get drunk even if you tipsy it'll just relax you a bit more and you can do that and if you don't drink and you're confident without it which i sometimes am i don't need to drink every night out like not much because i'm really loud and annoying and confident all the time um i don't do it it's completely up to you um is it as good as expected yeah i think mine was i know like one of my close friends um her freshers wasn't good at all and she really didn't enjoy it definitely see where people go out like i go to bath but i've been out in bristol a lot um well i'll say a lot maybe like three or four times but there's other cities around which will have things and even if there's not many clubs there'll be pubs there'll be bars there'll be something to do um and freshers week i'd say read around first because there are a lot of different like wristbands and tickets that you can buy definitely read in and sort of go into the group chats if you're in them or 
look at YouTube videos and see what people did. I went to the 18 to 25 events one. Make sure you're not getting scammed. Make sure you're not paying 80 quid for one event because I paid 25 quid for like the whole week and that was good enough. Like it was pretty good. It just depends how much of a picky clubber you are, I suppose. But music and alcohol, that's all you need, isn't it? And a theme, that's all you need. What is essential for uni that you wouldn't have thought so beforehand? That is a really good question because I wish I'd known the answer to this before. These are going to be like really stupid and like weird answers, but these are things I wish I knew. Firstly, I'll say a speaker. So like a little Bluetooth speaker because for pre-drinks and things, that is a lifesaver. A girl in my house had one and I think if we didn't have it, pre-drinks would have been so dead and quiet and it just really lifts the mood and gets you pumped for going out. Um you don't all have to have one like just chat with your housemates before you move in or when you move in and you can all split the price or just get someone if they've already got it to bring one definitely that's an essential people probably already think about that actually but i didn't but i was luckily en lucky enough to have someone in my house who had one also okay the same girl actually i'm not going to name her in case she doesn't want me to name her had this like handheld it was like a long um dish brush and in the end you put the fairy liquid and then as you were scrubbing the fairy liquids came out of the bristles so i'll try and like insert a picture of what i mean it's like a handheld scrubber and you wash the dishes and it has um fairy liquids coming out of the bristles oh my god i know that sounds so <laughs> excuse me that sounds so like adult and boring but lifesaver i am getting one for next year i can't really think of anything else medicines so like for example this is a bit tmi but i have mentioned it in another video i recently had a urinary tract infection a uti so it's like a bladder infection and apparently you can get tablets that if you feel it coming on you can get rid of it straight away rather than going through the two weeks of pain and getting the antibiotics so what i do you can literally get them on amazon or from tesco or wherever get stock up on like things like that so that you don't actually have to go out to the doctors you might not even be registered to the doctor um and you might have to go all the way home which was the case for me when i had a mouth infection so try and stock up on like medicines and things like that just to prevent things rather than going through it at uni on your own because honestly it's just horrible probably just to um register with the doctor i definitely would um I'm only about an hour and a half, not even that, away from home. So I didn't do it just because I could literally get on the Megabus home if I needed to go to the doctor. And if it was anything serious, I could just go to A&E. But if you're like three hours plus from, maybe even two hours plus from home, definitely register with the local doctor just because it's like peace of mind. If you've got any sort of infection, you can just go straight there, get the antibiotics and it'll clear up in a few days rather than having to travel all the way home when you're ill. That is just the worst. So yeah, I definitely recommend that. Other than that, I can't really think of anything. I might come back to that, but yes, that is all really. Everyone at <laughs> everyone at Bath Spa seems really friendly. Is that really how it is? <laughs> um, I guess I haven't really I haven't really come across someone who isn't friendly. Um, there's obviously the odd one or two that I've come across who aren't my type of friends if you know what I mean like, I wouldn't be friends with people like that but I wouldn't say people are unfriendly they're just different to me um but then again I didn't really mingle as much everyone on my drama course lovely so yeah you know if you're clashing with people just don't hang around with them don't force yourself to be friends with people that you don't like that's literally the grown-up thing to do you're in uni after all um you're independent what's the point in wasting time on people that you actually don't think are very friendly and nice just literally don't even go there. Just don't bother being friends with them. Even if one of your friends is friends with them, just don't do it. Like, I don't see the point. It's like an absolute waste of time. Um, you're there for you at the end of the day, no one else. And as long as you've got a group of small group of friends and yourself, that's it. Just don't waste time on people like that. Because there are, I can tell you, some arrogant, think they're better than you people when they're in the same uni as you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> And especially with my course, because I'm doing drama, people think see it as a like waste of a degree or whatever. And people look down on your course. And I just think if, if people are going to talk to you like that, just literally avoid them, ignore them. What's the point in wasting your breath? Just literally don't bother. So that's the answer to that one. I'm sure everyone at Bath Spa is lovely. I just don't mingle that much. And from my experience, yeah, they are. 
next question is i'm not even a fresher but tips on how to get work done and stay motivated <sighs> you tell me i'm still working it out myself i think the only way i sort of motivate myself is just starting and i know that sounds really stupid but as soon as i start i'm on a roll and i can work and probably get a whole 2000 asset 2000 word essay done in one day um i'm not the type of person to sort of start one that day and then a month later come back to it once i start i have to keep going and going and then just finish it a countdown is definitely very motivating for me um even if you know if you've got holiday coming up countdown to that if you've got um even if you haven't got a holiday even if you're just going home for a weekend count down to that and say right i'm gonna get this done for that weekend so that i don't have to do it when i'm home and i can just chill out little things like that definitely keep me motivated when you've got things to look forward to which i know is very hard at the moment because none of us have anything to look forward to apart from like being able to drive five more miles than we already are <laughs> um but yeah that's the all the advice i can give because i'm still trying to work it out for myself do you think it'll be hard coming in as a second year student from New York? I've actually been messaging this girl a little bit. She's asked me a few questions. She's come in. I'm pretty sure she's coming to Bath. Yeah, she is. She's coming to Bath Spa. Um, I hope I'm got that wrong. She definitely is because we've been talking. That must be so scary. But I know a few international students. And if you are coming from a different country or a different side of the whole world, like there's quite a good support system in our uni, I think because <laughs> the people i've spoken to they mingle with us like it's not segregated segregated at all you have chances to mingle with everyone on your course um and you'll be absolutely fine coming in as, as a second year i think that's even more exciting because everyone on your course will already be very confident and they won't even though they won't be in the same boat as you they'll be confident enough to come up and talk to you and make you feel welcome i think i think that's really a big part just try and mingle with people and you'll be absolutely fine that goes for everyone in freshers really um just mingle that is literally it just get yourself out there and you'll be fine as soon as you talk to one person you'll talk to two then three then four and then see their friends and then their friends and it'll just like be a domino effect and you'll be the most popular girl in uni in no time <laughs> um don't hold me to that but who knows i really hope that helped i actually found it really fun talking about all that i hope i wasn't too rambly and i hope you watched till the end even though i talk like so fast and i'm quite boring <laughs> i hope you did enjoy um if you have got any more questions feel free to dm me i'm not going to do another video on this now but dm me and i'll answer as well as i can and yeah that's it really um let me know what you want to see in my next video if you want to see a vlog again um or a get ready with me or a catch, just a catch up like this i don't mind and yeah i've really enjoyed filming that and i hope i wish everybody who is a fresher or a second year coming from like an international place the best of luck and you should be really excited because first year of uni is amazing and i'm so gutted my first year was cut short because it was the best time of my life just love every moment and even if you're having a down day just like be grateful be positive be grateful that's all i can say because realistically you're in like this massive place doing something you love so just make the most of it and absolutely love your time and that's all i can say thank you so much guys um follow me on instagram and tiktok i love my tiktok at the moment and i'll see you very soon with another video thank you so much stay safe stay healthy and yeah okay love you bye